Okay, it looks like we're ready to go. Uh, chapter 3.12, Choose a Method. All right, you know, many of you will just want to just jump in and, and do it one way only, but it's important to spend some time thinking. There are some mes methods when we're adding and subtracting. They want you to remember the commutative, the associative, as well as uh, just um, paper and pencil, which is what we're kind of used to doing. And then the last one that you, you may use uh, in a pinch, but I don't want you to I don't want it to be your first one is a calculator. All right, so um, basically, if you remember, a commutative property is when two numbers change places. If they have a number like three point um, one nine, plus 3.04 plus uh, 3.81. They want you to notice that if you looked at the 0.19 and the 0.81, that 81 and 19 actually make a whole 100 or 100 hundredths or 1. So you'd use the commutative property to switch these two around. You'd rewrite it like this. And then really in your head, oops, I wrote 18 here. This is supposed to be 81. Did I do everything else right? Yeah. All right, so 3.81. You can do this one in your head. 6, this is 7.00, because the 81 and the 19 make a whole nother number. We've got 3 plus 3 is 6, OK? And then if we have uh, 7 plus 3.04, we can do that in our head, and it just becomes 10.04. All right, so this is a good time to, me to use the commutative property. Are we trading places with numbers? Two numbers can be swapped out if we're adding or multiplying them, and this is addition. Okay, um, the associative property would be um, where we change the parentheses. And you might do that if um, the numbers um, looked like 3.04. Same, we use the same numbers. We just put this one first plus 3.19 plus 3.81. Okay, so it could be that they have it listed like this, and you're supposed to add these two. But again, you notice that the 3.19, sorry, the 3.19 and the 3.81 actually would go better together. Then you could rewrite it using the associative property. The associative property is the one where we talk about the grouping symbols. Grouping symbols, right? Eh, we don't need those there. The grouping symbols. And so uh, 3.04 plus and then put the 3.19 plus 3.81 together in the in the parentheses and then it helps you know that you can do this one first so that's the associative property pa paper and pencil would be just adding them up in a standard way 3.19 3.04 we could just add these up 9 plus 4 is 13 okay 6 and then we'll add that third one, which is 3.81. And add again. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10.04, which is what we got over here, too. We got 10.04, but we just added. We didn't do it in our head. We just used paper and pencil. And then, of course, the last way would be to get out a calculator and just punch the numbers in. And they want you to make good choices on what you're doing. Okay. And I want you to know that if, uh, if there are three numbers, uh, added together or subtracted. Okay, added or subtracted. I want you to look, look using your eyes, look for the commutative and the associative. I guess I'll write it out. All right, look for one of these if there are three numbers added together. Okay, if there's not, then you can use paper and pencil or calculator. If there's three numbers, you want to look for those. So that's your biggest 
trick. They might give you a number like 1.82 plus 2.28 plus 2.18 and you're going to see this 82 and 18 and you're going to recognize you could put those right together and so you'll use the commutative property 1.82 plus 2.18 and you'll do maybe the associative property too. If you go ahead and add some parentheses, and then the only one left is 2.28. Okay, 82 and 18 is 100, so this is 3, 4, and 5. 5 plus 2.28 is 7.28. And it's quickly done. And I'm doing it quickly on purpose because I want you to see that it's easy, that it's quick. You can actually just add these two together and come up with. Uh, with your numbers. This is 3, 4, oh I came up with 5, 2, 3, 4, I shouldn't have come up with 5, it's a good thing I checked myself. Alright, um, the 82 and the 18 kind of add up to be 1, and we have 1 and we have 2, 2 point something, 2, 1 point something, 2 point something, and then the leftover, what the decimal pieces are kind of made a mess of that so I better do another one. What happens if you have, it, basically it happens when they have three together. They might write 5.6 plus 2.33 plus um, 2.3. Uh, excuse me, this is supposed to be 2.4. Okay, and you'll see that the 0 0.6 and the 0.4 add together to make one whole. So we have five 5, 6, 7, plus this and this, make the 8. And then we get 10.33, and we're done. Okay, this is stuff that you can do in your head. You're using the commutative property or the associative property. Okay, that's basically what you have to do. You have to prove it um, on this assignment. They may just give you, uh, you have to prove that you can tell. And you need to decide which method you're going to use. But again, you're just adding and subtracting. 22.50 minus 8.99. Okay? Now, you, you know, this is a paper and pencil method or a calculator method. You can't use the commutative property because you can't switch them around because it's subtraction. You can't use the associative property because there's no parentheses here. Um, unless I were to change this around, um, and then I could use the associative property and the commutative property if I were to, if I were just going to be a little silly. Um, and so I'll show you, just for education's sake, 22.50 minus, and then I'm going to make a parenthesis here and I'm going to change 8.99 into um, 8.50 plus um, 0 0.49 because 50 and 49 equals 99 so I just wanted to split that out a little bit. Um, actually uh, it would possibly be easier to um, change this 8 into a 2, okay, change the 8 into a 2, this is just for fun, we're just playing with math here, um, and add the other 6 over here, so 2 plus 6 is 8, and 50 plus 49 is 99, so now I've got, I've got this. So what this really kind of brings the distributive property in, and this is not part of our lesson, but I think it's kind of fun because we can see that this 250, if we subtract this 250 from 2250, we can actually sort of do that in our head, and that leaves us 20.50, and we, we still have, that subtracting this one thing, but we still have to subtract the 6.49. Um, this isn't 2050, this is just 20. That's why we did it. We set it up so that we could just get an even number. We take 20, 250 away from 2250, we just get 20. And that gives us an even number. And so we, we really could almost do this next one in our head. Because um, uh, 20 take away 7 is 13. 
I rounded this up because I know I need to keep some uh, some other numbers in here, 49 um, from 100 is 51. Okay, 51. So 1351 is what I got breaking this apart. I, I'm, I'm not sure enough that that's right. I, I might have to come over here and do a paper and pencil just to check my answer. This is the original 2250 take away 899, and I have to borrow to get one, and then borrow again. 14. Okay, so the 51 is right, and then borrow again. 11 take away 8 is 3. Bring the 1 down, 1350. Okay, so, so I could kind of do it in my head by splitting this out or doing it on paper using the distributive property and the associative property. Um, most of you are going to be happier just doing paper and pencil on this type of question, but it, it made sense for me to go ahead and show you this because I know there are a couple of you out there that think this is fun and you do it this way just to prove that you can. Okay, and that works. That works for me. This lesson, um, that's all there is to it. Just remember the commutative property and the associative property are big. They're a big part of that. Okay? All right. So, <clears throat> one, of the thing I, one of the things I did today... Uh, was go out and get a Christmas tree, and I took my family with me. Okay, so that was kind of fun. I I, uh, I went out, and I had a hat on, and um, because it was cold outside, and there's me. My hat didn't look exactly like that. That looks kind of like a golfer's hat, don't you think? It does. But I was happy to go out. Went out. And I took a saw with me, so I had one of those cool saws that, that goes over like this, and then it has all the little teeth right here. And this is a Christmas tree saw, or a limb saw. It, it works, the teeth are really big and they're really sharp, and you can get down on the ground and cut out, cut down your tree. I took my wife with me, and I would draw her but she's way more beautiful than, than what I can do. So I'm just going to leave that alone. And my daughter went with me too. Okay, so we had these two um, wonderful looking people, my wife and my daughter, who went with me. <laughs> and we went out to the trees, and we, uh, we went to uh, a, a U-cut place, and we selected our trees. We were going to get one of the little guys, and my, my daughter decided that we better get a big one. And so... Um, <clears throat> When we finally found our tree, it was really cool looking. It had it was, uh, had all of these pretty branches. Now, some of you guys might recognize this kind of Christmas tree. This is a grand fir. Um, some of you may choose to get the noble fir. That's the most expensive kind. It's more prickly, and there's space in between the branches, so you can hang lots of decorations on there. Um, the grand fir is very beautiful, um, but there's not as much space. It's softer. It's more like you could pet the tree. It's almost like a fuzzy little critter. You could pet it. And our tree is really big and fat. It keeps on going like this. In fact, I, uh, I was down on the ground with the saw in place trying to cut the tree. And it has. It, I realized it had a really really wide, really wide bottom. And, and uh, the, the stump here, it wasn't a stump yet, it was the, the trunk of the tree it was going to be a stump because I was down here on my hands and knees and I was reaching under here with the saw and, and I was having to go back and forth and back and forth. My daughter was standing over here and she was pulling on the tree just a little bit. She's pulling that direction on the tree so that I could, uh, as, the, as I cut through, but it took me hours. Well, it really took me about about 10 minutes. Okay, and then we got the tree down, and uh, I guess maybe if I get a chance, I'll show you what it looked like when we loaded it up on our car on my next video.